Don't forget to sign up for our free resource from our favorite positive reinforcement dog trainer, Irit Bloom. You can simply go to thisispawprint.com slash ask. I said, how about if I work with my local SPCA, I go pick a dog up and I take a dog with me to the new home. I feature the dog too. The dog is looking for a new home too. I marry that in with what I do. And so that's kind of how it started. My, I went to my boss and I said, hey, I have this crazy idea. This is what I want to do. This is Paw Print, an animal rescue community. Episode 41. I'm Nancy Ree. And I'm Harold Ree. Today's guest is Jennifer Barkin. Jen works in real estate for Rose and Womble in Virginia, and she came up with a very creative idea, incorporating animal rescue into her Ask Jen Live segments when she features a new home. It's been great for animals and for business. Jen is a graduate of Old Dominion University, Go Monarchs, and she has five dogs of her own, Tito the Six Pound Terror, Gizmo, the dog found in a dumpster, Minnie and Marley both rescued Labradoodles, and their most recent addition, Rousey. If you want to learn more about Jen Barkin and see some terrific photos of her dogs along with some of the other dogs she's rescued, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 41. That's the number 41. First and foremost, I'm a mom, wife, and rescue mom to five dogs right now. My other job is a realtor for a local real estate company here in Virginia. And I do a lot of work with the online side of life, online sales and marketing for this company, Rose and Womble. With that, I have joined my passion for helping animals. I've married that with my job and been able to do some pretty cool things. With, with rescue. How long have you been in real estate? I have been in real estate for 10 years now. Kind of fell into it, so to speak. I was actually mm. a biology and chemistry major in college and wanted to be a veterinarian. That was my lifelong goal. And I tried and tried to get into vet school and it was just so hard And at that point, my life, you know, at that point I was getting married and then I had my first child and life took a different path. When my kids were four and two years old, I said, you know, I need to I need to get a job and start working back in the workforce. And through a mutual family member, I met Van Rose with Rose and Womble and I started working for him as an office manager. So that's how I first got into the real estate business in new homes. And then over the last 10 years, then I said, well, you know, I'm going to get my actual license. So got my real estate license. That turned into I was operations manager for our division. And then that turned into this new role of online sales, which I started the program for our company about two and a half, three years ago. How would you tell someone at a cocktail party what you do as far as online sales? I get to take the person looking for a new home online. I'd say 96% of people start their uh, their home search online, just like they do for pretty much anything else. And I get to take them through the process of I'm kind of like a virtual concierge. Mm. I find out what they're looking for, what's important to them. And then I, because I work with all of our builders here in Hampton Roads, or the majority of them anyway, I'm able to match them with the perfect new home. Uh, Any kind of highlights that you're really proud of? This past year has been uh, amazing. Last January, a year ago, January, I was recognized by the National Association of Home Builders. Uh, I was a silver award winner for my role as online sales consultant. So I was um, one of five finalists in the country for my work in online sales. And then this past January, just last month, I actually was the gold winner. So I just won the National Sales and Marketing Council Award for the year for the, the best in the country. So huge um, honor. That is incredible. Yeah. I just got back from Las Vegas where the, the gala was held at Caesars Palace. And then like a week after I got back, I just got notification that a colleague of mine had nominated me for 
top 40 under 40 for the professional builder magazine. And I won that too. (laughs) So I just found that out. I mean, it's like, and I just turned 40 three weeks ago. And so I told him, I said, I said, did you feel sorry for me that, you know, I was turning 40 and he was like, no, I just, you know, I thought this was a great way to, to end your thirties and start your forties. So the builder magazine will come out in March and then they send everybody to San Francisco for a party for the people. So that is incredible. What a past 12, 13, 14 months of your career. Bringing the pups into uh, my life with work has this past year has local TV has recognized our program. Um, The local newspaper has recognized our program. I love talking about rescuing dogs and the work I do with the SPCA. And it's just been awesome. How long ago did you start and, and what was really the genesis? Last year, or the beginning of the year, I had started doing this um, program called Ask Jen Live, and I would go to one of our new home communities, and we represent about, we have about 40 40 to 45 new home communities right now that we are marketing uh, for. So I would go out on Wednesdays, and I would go to one of our communities, and I would do kind of like a live social segment where I would post on Facebook and Twitter and I would talk about the home and the builder, the area and the community. I didn't have a whole lot of engagement. I was talking to my husband about, you know, how can I get more engagement? And whenever I talk about my animals and my dogs and different stories, people really respond to that. And I said, you know, how about if I work with my local SPCA, I go pick a dog up and I take a dog with me to the new home. I feature the dog too. The dog is looking for a new home too. I marry that in with what I do. And so that's kind of how it started. My, I went to my boss and I said, Hey, I have this crazy idea. This is what I want to do. She said, absolutely. She's a big animal lover. She's like, I think that's a great idea. And then I said, you know what? I want to take it a step further. I'm going to ask my builder hey, would you sponsor this pup's adoption fee? You know, if the if the pup gets adopted within two weeks of being featured on my Ask Jen Live program, then would you pay for the adoption fee? And all of them said, heck yeah. That's a game changer, right? Yeah. So I was like, I started doing this in February of last year. I picked the Norfolk SPCA because that's close to where I live, and I have I had had um, great interaction with them before. So I went there and I said, you know, hey, I want to do this, and they were like, oh my gosh, we love this. This is great. I go Wednesday morning. I go and I I pick up um, a pup, and they I let them pick which one you know they think would be good to go with me. And, you know, I pick them up, you know, we go to the the community and I take pictures of them interacting with our salespeople. I take pictures of them in the house, you know, like it kind of sets up, hey, you could see yourself buying this house. You could see yourself with a pup in this house. You could see yourself, you know, with this. It's just a great, good feeling. Mm -hmm. It's great exposure for our builder clients and for the community and, Last year, we started in February, I featured 28 dogs. All of them have gotten adopted except for one. Mm. And the builders paid 20 of the adoption fees last year. So it's so cool. If someone Mm -hmm. were to visit a new home, they're seeing the dogs online or, or if they went to an open house, would they see a dog? Every Wednesday from 12 to 1 on... Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on YouTube also. Because what I do is, so I'll go, let me walk you through. So I'll, I'll go pick them up. Then I'll go to the site. And for an hour, I am um, live like tweeting and posting and talking about the dog. I'm talking about the house. I'm talking about the area, about the builder. I do a video with the dog. We're walking around the home together. I'm talking about the house. I'm talking about the dog. And so the idea is that we send out things like, hey, tune in tomorrow. I will be at Dominion Meadows from 12 to 1 and I'll have Bella with me from the SPCA. So we kind of give people, hey, tune in from 
from this time to this time. They can interact. They can ask questions on, with me on Twitter, on Facebook. They can ask questions about the dog. I mean, I've had people that have seen the dog that have instantly messaged me and said, I'm going to go meet her what time are you going to be back at the SPCA? Because mm. I'm going to go be there to meet her. I want to meet her. So that is such an amazing. What a feeling. Excitement. Yeah. And when I get back to the SPCA and they're waiting and they're like, oh, we've been waiting to meet her. It's just so awesome. You make a difference. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been great because I can take my passion for helping animals and bring it into my work. And I love bragging about my builders who are absolutely on board. <laughs> Any particular dog that really inspired you or touched your heart? Oh, definitely. So there was this dog. I, I showed up at the SPCA and they said, all right, Jen, we're, we've got Bay. That was her name, Bay. We've got Bay for you today. And we just have to warn you that Bay is about... 15 to 20 pounds overweight. She's extremely obese. She was a little small chihuahua like terrier mix. Okay, so if, if you know how little those dogs are, 15 to 20 pounds overweight is a lot. A furry basketball maybe, I don't it know. Was, yes, exactly. She was absolutely, you know, and I said, oh yeah, okay, you know, and they said, no, I'm. we're telling you, just be prepared because she's so obese, you know, she can't she can't like clean herself. You know, she really has a hard time using the restroom and because she's so overweight. And I said, well, that's okay. You know, and she was a senior. I think she was nine years old, eight or nine years old. They bring her out, Harold. And I mean, they weren't lying. I mean, she just was a mess. So I said, that's all right. You know, we're, we're going to go and put her in the car. And just immediately it was that connection. Like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a tough, this is going to be a tough one. Because I'm thinking a lot of people aren't going to want to take this on because she needed some extra help. And I said, well, I'm going to try to get her as much exposure today as possible. So I took her down to the Virginia Beach Oceanfront to try to, it was during the summer. So I thought, well, and I put a little adopt me little scarf on her because I thought if somebody, you know, I want as many people to see her as possible. Mm -hmm. We go down to the beach. I take some pictures down there. We go to the new home community. Well, while I'm featuring her, a woman sends me a, a private message on Facebook and she says, tell me about Bay. Does she have any other problems other than being overweight. And I said, no, she just, you know, she's older and she, she just needs somebody who's going to work with her to get her some exercise and put her on the proper diet. That's going to really work with her. And she said, well, you know, we've been looking for an older dog to bring into our family that, you know, we could help. And I said, well, I think she would be perfect for you. So she said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the SPCA tomorrow. We're going to, me and my husband are going to meet her. I said, great. So she goes and she calls me and she says, you know, I just don't think she's going to fit through our doggy door because I'm telling <laughs> you, Harold, she was, yeah, she, she, you know, she just, she said, I just don't think. And I said, well, if the doggy door is the only thing that is preventing you from adopting her, we will buy you a new doggy door. <laughs> like, well, I'll figure out how to buy you a bigger doggy door. Like, right. don't let that be the only thing that stops you. Right. So she said, well, I, let me see. My husband is going to make a, he's going to make a copy of the doggy door. He's going to make a replica and we're going to take it with us to the SVCA and see if she can fit through it. All right, th this is getting complicated. <laughs> People building mock doggy doors to yes. bring to the uh, SPCA. Okay, all right. Yes. So she she wanted to take the frame just to make sure she would fit through the doggy door. So they did that, and she called me, and she says, it works. We're so excited. We're adopting her. So she continues to send me updates. Um, Bay has lost eight pounds. She sends Whoa. me pictures. Yeah, she's lost eight pounds already. And then come to find out, they have an actual, I mean, these people are amazing. They have an actual music room in their home where they play that her husband like plays the piano and like they play classical music. I mean, it couldn't have been a better situation. 
they saw this on my thing and they found her because, I mean, it just is awesome. The whole timing of it, so many things had to go right, right? Exactly. We still keep in touch. And like I said, she'll send me pictures and, you know, give me an update on her weight loss. And that right there is why that's why I'm doing it. Either the dog will click with them or the house will click with them. But but some way I can touch that person and it's a win-win for everybody mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if they see the dog and they fall in love, great. If they see the house and they fall in love, great. But it takes them from just looking and it puts them in the home and touches their heart. So mm-hmm. wish I thought of this sooner. There you go. Facebook followers, Twitter followers, all that. What was the positive impact uh, featuring these dogs had on your social media presence? It went from 5,000 impressions a month to over 100,000 impressions a month. 20 times the impressions? Yeah. 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 This has been over probably six months. 20 times the impressions Mm -hmm. of what you had before. Exactly. And engagement as far as, you know, people commenting on the post. And I also started a weekly like little mini newsletter that I send out to our realtor community to highlight our new homes that are ready to be moved into. And in that little newsletter, I put a recap of this past Wednesday's Ask Jen Live session. So I'm getting a lot of good feedback from our realtor community saying, I'm really enjoying looking at your newsletter, not only for the the new construction information, but it's great to see these pups you have. And I love seeing the stories. And so it's, it's helping me connect to my colleagues as well that don't necessarily work for my company. These are, Mm -hmm. these are outside brokers that work for other companies, but uh, Mm -hmm. it's been, it's just been great. Feel good all the way around. The uh, Norfolk uh, SPCA, what's been Mm -hmm. their response? You know, any chance they get, they're just, oh, we just, you know, thank you so much. We just love what you're doing. And um, they uh, always include me. I was so honored that they, they include me in a, uh, included me this past December in their Christmas or their holiday gathering. Mm. And, you know, I just thought that was really cool that they was a very limited group and they included me, you know, like I'm part of their team. Now you're part of the pack. You're part of the pack. Yeah, part of the pack. Exactly. After working with them now for a year, they really care about those animals. I mean, it is like genuine that they care. And so I'm so happy that I partnered with them. It's a passion, right? Yeah. I I mean, they really care. They really do. They care about what happens with them and they're safe and that who is adopting them is the best fit, which that's huge. They're not just, oh, good. There's somebody wanting to adopt. I mean, they're, they're really making sure this is a good fit for this particular animal, which I think is huge. I mean, that's important. That's Mm -hmm. really important. Mm -hmm. And on a personal level, They've worked with me. Rousey is the foster failure that we found on the eastern shore in the middle of nowhere. I already had four dogs and I thought, I can't take another dog in. This is crazy. And so they had kind of helped me figure some things out with her because we thought she was pregnant and all this stuff. Mm. Anyway, we long story short, Harold, we ended up keeping her. She's she's one of the barking one of the barking gang over here. She has just become one of the greatest dogs. She's a little bit of an escape artist who tries to get out whenever she can, but we're working on that. Yeah. Even without the dogs, you have a, a bright personality with the dogs. It just takes it to the next level, right? I love talking about stories of rescue. All of my dogs are rescues. And and it's funny because my husband used to be, I mean, we've been married 15 years now, but he, he used to be, you know, do not bring another dog home. We cannot. <laughs> and now I've converted him because now he's like, oh, we can keep her. That's fine. Right. You know. Now yeah. you're like, wait a second. I'm like, wait a second. Okay, this is crazy. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's fine. What's one more? Why don't you tell us a little bit about your own life journey, your childhood, your education? Born and raised here in Hampton Roads. I was actually, I was born in Norfolk. My dad was a Norfolk police officer for many years. And when I was 
2002, we moved to Virginia Beach, which is just right the next city over. Mm. And that's where I grew up. And then I went to college here in Norfolk as well. Stayed, you know, just stayed here. So I'm, I'm really like a hometown girl. And that really is, is a benefit to me in my current job because we're such a military town. Mm. I talk to a lot of people that are moving here to the area that are relocating here for their jobs. And I know since I've lived here all my life, I know where everything is. And my husband's from here. What part of Virginia would you call that? So Southeast uh, Tidewater area. It's also called Hampton Roads. Mm. Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk, Portsmouth. Yeah, I haven't been to Virginia Beach in a long, long time, but all I remember was that it was beautiful. It's, I think it's like number three best place to live in the world or something, in the, in the U.S. I mean, it's, it's really, it's a great area to live, I think, because you're three hours from the mountains, close to, you know, you're not far from D.C. if you want to go to a big city. You're not far from New York. I mean, we go up to New York all the time. It's, you know, six and a half hour drive up, up the eastern shore to yeah. New York City and you're there. Not I mean, bad. Not bad. you can go down to the beach in Carolina. I mean, it, it's just a great place. Spoken like a true real estate professional. <laughs> I was a great student. I said, well, I need to get some experience in a vet hospital. So I got a job, a part time job working as a vet assistant at a of that clinic. And I worked for this doctor, his name was Dr. Burian, and he was so cool. He did all kinds of surgeries. I got to sit in on, um, I got to learn how to do dentals on dogs. I mean, we worked on dogs, cats. He was a, um, he was a predator, bird of prey specialist. So wow. people, yeah, people would find, you know, these like falcons and stuff and bring them in and we got to work on them and he would like rehabilitate them. It just was really neat. Changing gears. Can you tell us a little bit about your dogs, Tito, Gizmo, Minnie and Marley? When our one dog passed away, I was walking through the neighborhood and there was this barking coming from this house, like in, incessantly just barking, 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 barking. And the neighbor was outside and the house looked abandoned. It just mm. was like not, nobody was in there. And I said to the neighbor, what, what is with this dog that's barking? You know, wh- where is it coming from? What's going on? And she said, oh, we hate that dog. We absolutely hate that dog and that dog, you know, the people left it there and, you know, they foreclosed on their house and they left the dog there. And I said, my goodness. So it took me about two weeks to get, get them, but she was right. The people had cut a hole in the back uh, door Mm. and the dog could just go in and out. So it wasn't even a doggy door. It was like a doggy hole 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 in the door. They cut a hole in the door and the dog was basically living like that on his own for six months. And How did he get fed? I mean, uh, from what I understand, he was eating the neighborhood cat food. The people that left him, they would come back periodically and just dump like a like a big trough of food. He was such a mess. I mean, he he was had no hair because he was so flea infested. You know, like I said, he was living in that house for six months on his own. And he was flea infested. He had eaten all his hair. He was just um, he was just going around the neighborhood terrorizing everybody. It took me about two weeks to get him. He wouldn't come. He was wouldn't come to me. Was was trying to attack me. And I would take treats, and you know he just would not trust me at all. He would he was so loyal to that house. It was like he was waiting for his owners to come back. You know, and they had just abandoned him, right. but he would not leave. And so finally I said, you know what? I am going to get that dog. I'm going to put on gloves and a long sleeve shirt. And if he bites me, so what? I'm just going to get him, and I'm going to take him to the clinic or something because he needs care. Like, I don't think Tito knew who he was messing with, right? No, he did not. I didn't really have a plan. All I knew was I'm getting him out of the house and... My daughter at the time, she was like, you know, I really, can I go with you? And this was like two blocks from our house, you know? And I said, well, you can come with me. I said, but I don't want you to get near him because he's very unpredictable. And, you know, I don't know what he's going to do. And she's like, okay. We walked down there and he happened to be outside in his front yard. In the front yard? 
Yeah. So okay. he had, he was able to just go in and out of this makeshift doggy door. So, oh, so there was no fencing. No. So he, he really is terrorizing the neighborhood. Yeah. Then. So he, so literally he would like, like anybody walking by his yard, he would just like come out and like try to attack them and bark at them. I mean, he just was a mess. So he happened to be out front. And so I told my daughter, I said, look, I want you to just sit down over here on the curb and don't look at him. Don't, I'm going to try to like scoop him up, you know, and he's only like six pounds. I mean, we're talking about a little teeny Cairn Terrier. That's what he is. She goes, okay, you know, mommy, I'll, so she sits down on the curb and Harold, I kid you not, as soon as he saw her, he became a different dog. He melt. It's like he, he melted. Oh my gosh. Like he must've had a little girl in his life or something, but he, as soon as he saw her, he came over to her really meekly wagging his tail, licked her. And I hooked the, the lead on him. And that was it. He's been the most amazing dog since then. That's such a touching story. I'm going to tell you, he is my heart. He is such a good boy. We've had him about five years now about a year after that a girl I work with came in and she's like oh I you know I found this dog and the dumpster and you know what do I do and I said well bring her to work and let me you know let me help you this poor dog was somebody had shaved her down shaved all her hair off and she was sunburned whoops (laughs) and yeah can't even imagine that she was in this like trash area of this apartment complex and she had her hair was she had no hair and she was sunburned from being out because it was during the summer and she was looked like she had been out for a while and was just sunburned in a mess so anyway you know we we tried to find her owner you know no microchip no you know no tags nothing so we brought her home and we ended up keeping her too. So her name is Gizmo. I guess about a year and a half ago, this local rescue organization here in the area had raided this backyard breeder who had died and had about 30 Labradoodles that (laughs) were on this farm and he had died and they had been uncared for, for like weeks So I contacted them because I was like, you know, I want to help. I can foster if you need fosters. And they were like, no, we don't need fosters, but we will be adopting these dogs out if you're interested. And my son has asthma. So I had said, you know, the next dog that I get is, you know, needs to be, can't shed too much and everything. So we adopted one of those Labradoodles from there. And then a couple months after that, the rescue lady contacted me and she goes, you know, we have one that's not working out where she's currently at. She's just not adjusting. She's just, I mean, and these dogs had no socialization whatsoever. Mm. I mean, they still, I'm still working with them. I mean, they're scared of their shadow. Right. Um, she said, you know, she's just not working out. The right. people just, they just can't deal with her. And I said, well, we'll take her because maybe being with one of the other doodles that she was with will help her. Maybe she'll remember her. That was a total foster fail because as soon as I brought her home, they were like best friends. Like they were like buddies, like they had reconnected. We think that they're related somehow because they look a lot alike. And um, they were on this breeding farm together. That's the long and short of the... The barking dogs. In so many ways, you're you're an animal rescue hero. Oh, thanks, Harold. As we wrap up, how do folks find you? You can find me on Facebook at Ask Jen New Home Specialist. You can find me on Instagram at Ask Jen B. You can find me on Twitter at Ask Jen B. And you can go to Rose and Womble Realty's new homes page, which is rwnewhomes.com. And I'm on there as well. I do use Periscope on Wednesdays when I'm doing my Ask Gen Live session from 12 to 1 on Wednesdays. So 
So I do use Periscope for that. And um, YouTube I do as well. I usually take the video that I do on Wednesdays and I'll put it on YouTube. So all of my videos that are featured each week are on there as well. And of course, that's 12 to 1 Eastern time here in the United States. Okay. Exactly. You have any encores for the rest of 2016? I don't know. Like I was thinking about that the other day and I was like, well, now that I'm, you know, I'm featured on as a guest herald with you, I'm like, okay, now what's next? Uh, Do I need to, I need to try to see, I need to get on Ellen. I need to get on the Today Show. You know what I would really love, Harold, is I would love for this program as a realtor to catch on to other markets. Like I would love to, to have a realtor in where you're at in California. I would love to have a realtor, like say, I want to do this program with what I do. And then, and there's, and there's no reason why you can't do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be so cool. Have other realtors, not just new construction, but other realtors that could maybe do a program like this. I would love to to start that movement. I, I love the fact that you're mentioning being on this podcast is, is one of your highlights. I would think yeah. it's not, I don't know if it's going to be even be top 10 by the, by oh the time 2016 is done. So when Ramona sent me that email or whatever, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. So thank you so much. No, you're so welcome. What's the best, I don't know, what's the best advice you've ever been given, if you can remember? Best advice I've ever been given. Don't get comfortable. Make yourself uncomfortable because that's how you're going to grow. Right. Um, I think we get, sometimes we get, you know, caught in just you know, the every day and okay, I'm, I feel, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. I feel comfortable. And then, then we kind of stay stagnant, which I did for a while there. And I can say the past three years when we started this new program, it was, I raised my hand and said, I want to start this new program at Rose and Womble. Online, online sales. sales. Yes, exactly. We, we didn't have it. And I said, you know what, I want to do this. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Starting something from nothing and you're only, you can only go up and get better. I think that it's really important to not get stuck in life. You know, put your, put your neck out there and see what happens. And, you know, sometimes you're going to fall on your face, but most of the time you learn and you grow and you get better. So yeah, take a chance, right? Yeah, exactly. You've mentioned a couple times, some events that might be a challenge for all of us to, to kind of get over trying to get into vet school, all those obstacles you had to overcome in light of those kinds of events. How do you stay positive and and how do you move forward? Something I've learned as I get older is it's all about perspective. When I get frustrated, because of course I do just like everybody else, You know, when I look at my kids and my husband and a sunny day taking a walk with my dogs, like that is what is really important. Like none of that other stuff really matters. I mean, sure, at the end of the day, you want to feel good about what you're doing and that you're contributing something to society. But at the end of the day, you know, what you do with your job from nine to five is not really what matters in the scheme of things. Um, that's why, you know, being able to do this great stuff with the pups I do during the, you know, on Wednesdays, it really is fulfilling. I tell my husband all the time, it's about perspective. It's about knowing what is really important and, and just making sure that you always stay grounded and remain focused on, you know, what is important in your life and not get hung up in all the little small details of things because that can just make you go crazy. We want to say thank you to Jen Barkin for sharing her story and for giving us such a creative idea that's good for business and for animals. And we also want to say thanks to Ramona Rice for making the connection. Ramona is host of the Sports Gal Pal podcast. And she's coming out with new episodes later this month. So go take a listen. If you want to learn more about today's episode and see some great photos, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 41. If you want to nominate someone as a future guest on Pawprint, you can email us at thisispawprint at gmail.com. 
or go to our contact page. This is pawprint.com slash contact. Don't forget to sign up to receive two free resources from our favorite positive reinforcement dog trainer, Irate Bloom. Go to thisispawprint.com slash ask. If you want to check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, go to This Is Paw Print, all one word. If you want to listen to more episodes of Paw Print, you can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Overcast, a podcast app for iPhones. We want to say thank you to all of you out there for listening around the world and for sharing the stories that we feature on Paw Print. Remember that you share a positive message of love and peace by saving an animal. Have a great day, everyone, and see you next time on Paw Print. Paw Print is a production of EVER Education. You can handle the truth. Woohoo!